The attempted coup in Turkey, is that just like Hitler's night of long knives? Are they embracing radical Islam to be able to have more money? What's going on in Turkey? Here's the details. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. So many things are taking place, but you know, it's better to know what to do with the news that you know than to know all the news. So many things are taking place, but one thing we want to talk about today, which is very important, it was prophesied about by John Paul Jackson, this attempted coup that took place in Turkey. As a matter of fact, let's go there now. Sky News is reporting. Tanks on the streets. Jets overhead, the world watched in shock as a military coup unfolded in Turkey, a NATO country and ally of the West. The army attempted to put Turkey's main cities into lockdown, taking over state television and instructing a newsreader to announce a peace council was now in charge. Turkey's increasingly authoritarian president appeared to have lost control, but not for long. Recep Tayyip Erdogan appeared via a mobile phone link from the coastal resort of Marmaris, looking less than presidential, but using an independent TV channel to call his supporters onto the streets in defiance of a curfew ordered by the military. I invite the public to go to the airports, go to the squares, go to the streets. Let's gather together. They can come with their tanks and cannons and try to show what they can do. There's nothing more powerful than the people. I haven't seen anything more powerful. We can show the tanks who is powerful. In the face of gunfire from government troops trying to hold them back, supporters of the president tried to cross the main bridges linking Istanbul, vital communication links which the army had tried to seal off. There were reports senior military figures had been taken hostage. Turkey's democracy may not be very old. It's only been uh, really strongly established since the 1980s. Uh, so a 40-year-old democracy, but it's a very resilient democracy and the people are not willing to let their, their democracy go this easily. Then signs the coup was starting to crumble. The army sees itself as guardians of Turkey's secular constitution against a president who's tried to make their country more religious, eroding free speech and the right to protest. Yet here were people on the streets booing the soldiers and defiantly climbing on tanks. A soldier I am. I am the soldier. There is no passing here. It can run over me. It can run over this flag, but it can't pass from here. Where are they going? Who are they? After a failed attempt by the military to keep control of Istanbul's airport, President Erdogan managed to fly back in declaring the coup was an act of treason which had been thwarted. I send a message to our soldiers. You're our sons. You're pointing your gun towards your mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, your own people. We cannot accept this. This nation gave you your guns to protect us. If you point your gun against your own people, you're going to pay the price. On a chaotic night which saw bomb blasts and gunfire across the country, the government said more than 120 people had been arrested. There had been explosions at the parliament building in Ankara. By daylight, smoke could be seen on the skyline of the capital, along with the sound of sporadic gunfire. Many of those who challenged President Erdogan for power were seen surrendering in Istanbul, but there are still pockets of resistance with some opponents vowing to fight on. Lisa Holland, Sky News. Well, you think about this is so important because a lot of things that they're not teaching history. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest Googled uh, searches during uh, the um, a Brexit that took place inside of Europe when Brit Great Britain was going to leave the European Union, the biggest question that people searched for was, what's the European Union? They didn't even know about the European Union, much less Brexit. So, so many people don't understand today, you know, so many things going on. One thing is Turkey, 
Turkey was uh, the hub of the Ottoman Empire. But during World War I, uh, when they lost because they decided to be able to uh, join with Germany, Hitler, instead of join with uh, uh, America, Great Britain, and Russia, to be able to defeat Germany, and because they lost that war, they were part of it, the Ottoman Empire got cut up during that time. Got, got, and so what, what Ataturk did, which we'll talk about him in a little bit, Ataturk just took it and said, listen, we'll go secular, we'll get rid of uh, Islam, this Ottoman mindset, and we'll just have a Western view of Turkey. And so then you had, obviously, Turkey formed again. But what we're seeing, the question is, was this attempted coup, which didn't even make sense in regards to having the ability to do it, was it really like the night of long knives? Was it really like the light? The, the Night of Long Knives. Now, the Night of Long, long, long Knives was specifically what Hitler did. You know, as you're seeing Hitler right here, this is what he did. When he ran for office, uh, he wanted to be able to push his agenda on Germany, but the political arena wouldn't support him. And so there was one particular night that the reports are he set, his people set the um, uh, parliament on fire and blamed it on his political opponents and they went out that night and killed all the political opponents that were keeping him from uh, his agenda coming to pass and that's when he was lifted up the parliament basically voted away their rights and he became the Fuhrer which means leader of Germany so when you think about that that was a that was a political maneuver that took place and the way that he did it he caused a problem to happen that, and then he blamed it on his opponent, and he took advantage of that, and he eliminated, arrested, or killed, Knight of Long Knives, all of his political opponents. When you think about that, it's nothing new. It's what Nero did in regards to, and of course, Hitler ended up you know, persecuting the, the Christians and the Jews and put them in camps, uh, ended up putting, uh, burning uh, the bodies of Jews in ovens. It was just horrific what was going on. We have to pay attention when evil's on the rise. We have to pay close attention to it. And why we're saying that is because John Paul, Paul Jackson prophesied specifically, uh, I believe it in 2008, about watch for what would take place in Turkey. So when we're thinking about the night of long knives, think about what John Paul Jackson prophesied about Turkey. And it makes us think again, you know, what was Erdo Erdogan really doing? Let's take a look. We're going to see Turkey rise out of seemingly out of the ashes and become an incredible force in the Middle East. With, with darkness in the core of it. Right now, Turkey seems to be rather demure, but Turkey will not remain demure for long. So you're looking at, uh, you're looking at uh, Turkey rising. From, this is exactly what was said, prophetically what happened. And what we'll talk about in today's program, how Erdogan's been trying to do away with the Constitution, and the people were voting against him to be able to do that, where he would have ultimate power and there wouldn't be this political power. Islam is being embraced by the leadership there in Turkey, and the people don't want it. The people want a democracy there. So what happened? Maybe that was the night of long knives. Nero did it. You're looking at Nero right here. He did it in regards to the Christians. He burnt, he had, this, the city got burnt down in Rome, this emperor of, of Rome. He was about 27 years old, just totally held captive by the enemy of darkness and did terrible things to, to so many different people. But once Everybody began to blame him, and he wanted not to get the blame on him. He shifted the blame for the fire on Christians, and they began to persecute Christians. They began to kill them, boil them, cut Christians in two, and did all these terrible things to Christians. Well, that's what happened. He shifted the blame. He had a big event. He blamed it on the Christians, and he was the one, reportedly, that started the fire. It's no different when you think about all the ones that have been doing these type of things. I think about uh, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein in Iraq. You know, people look at Saddam Hussein and say, oh, he was a great leader. Saddam Hussein, he gathered everybody together. He had a coup of the leadership in Iraq, and he took the leader of Iraq, forced him to begin to name names of who was on his side while the parliament was gathered. And the, the former leader of Iraq, while Hussein was there, began to call out and said, this person was with me. And they toted that person out of the parliament in the presence of the other governmental leaders and in the presence of Saddam Hussein. And then he called another name out and he called another name out. And all of a sudden they began to drag former leaders or leaders of the government out of the door to where everybody didn't know whether their name was going to be called next. Almost half of the parliament was removed. 
Fear was overtaken, obviously, by the ones that were there. And that's exactly what Satan wants you to do is fear. That's what Sodom Hussein wanted everybody to do would be in fear. Then he told the ones that were there left the parliament for them to go out, them to take guns. This is more evil than Hitler. Take guns. He gave them guns and says, now you go out there and shoot those traitors. And they shot half reportedly of the parliament in Iraq and that's how he took leadership. Listen, we have to pay attention. These things happen all the time, but freedom takes diligence to be able to stand up. What took place at Turkey is important. First of all, President Barack Obama says he's a great friend of his. You know, we sent them a missile defense system in Iraq, the same defense system that uh, Israel has. And you're thinking, you know, what is going on? Is this taking place? Was that the night along Nige last night? What it's seeming prophetically like it is, God told us through John Paul Jackson, he says nothing happens without a prophetic warning first. And he said, watch Turkey, it will rise from the darkness. But the core of it, the core of it is evil. When we get back from this break, we're going to talk specifically about that. We're going to go right to Turkey and listen to the people, what they have to say about what Erdogan's doing. Make sure you join us after the break. John, it's just always the same. Nobody ever believes it's going to happen to them. No. Like, you know, you're raising your children, right? Mm-hmm. And you say, you know, one day you're going to have to get a job. And they say, oh, yeah, yeah. And uh-huh. then, then they realize at some point they're going to have to get, get a job. A job. <laughs> you know, or you say, you know, there's going to be riots in the streets. Mm. And people go, I wonder where that's going to happen. But they never think it's going to happen in it's their own them, streets. Right. Or they look for coups and they go, them people over there. Mm. I mean, that word, those people, those. oh, my God goodness that just oh, across the we water cannot, we cannot go there all right now you cannot it's those anyway so anyway so here this this people are defending Saddam Hussein's regime and that's how it started mm-hmm. with half of the parliament being shot by the other half after the former leader had to call them out one by one and they had to watch them get drug out one by one out this of the is room. on video this was recorded oh we you have could, it it's, we're gonna have it for you quaking. on the VFN torch you can actually see yeah. us and uh, th- we underestimate, I've always underestimated evil. I'm shocked. Like, wow, that's pretty evil. Mm. And then it gets deep, more evil yeah. and more evil. Well, let's go to Turkey. This is important. Let's begin to just look in Turkey. Let's don't listen to what CNN and everybody else is saying about Turkey. Let's go listen to the people of Turkey. Mm. And this is in 2015, you know, listening to how they're embracing Islam. This is important because you're, Islam, you're looking at a caliphate. If a government wants to embrace Islam, it's a political system and a religion. For everybody that tells you it's not a political system, they don't either they either they're ignorant or they're that they're not intelligent about Islam. Mm-hmm. Islam's about a political merging system, is what it's about. So the religion and, and politics goes together in the context of that. And so and to see this, watch how Turkey's embracing Islam and how how it's coming over to the people. You're gonna hear this lady be talking here. She's talking to Anthony Bourdain. And she says, she's saying, women can't laugh. Wow. Women can't laugh. And these, these Sharia laws that you hear people talking about, we've talked about it, you know, Sharia law follows Islam. Well, look what's happening. Now, supposedly, you know, Ataturk had a democracy. That's what he wanted, where, you know, uh, a representative government, a parliament, it's a government by the people. And now you have Erdogan, who's been pushing for quite some time, we talked about this, to be able to do away with the Constitution. He wants, he wants supreme leadership. He wants to be the Fuhrer of this. And we have to understand, we talked about this too, that the Mein, mein Kampf, the Bible for Hitler that he had put in all the churches that had him as the Savior, Erdogan reprinted that after the copyright. Yeah. It was Turkey. There's something about these dictators. They say that his palace, yeah. Erdogan's palace, is worth $668 million dollars. Right. You know, that he has an annual salary of $58 million, and there's just all this wealth, yet the right. people it never gets trickled down. Right. And he says all this authority, all this, you know, dictatorship is starting to emerge, and he's he's following Hitler's playbook. Yeah, and, and, and they printed the book, and they passed it out, and they were known for that. We talked about that on the program. We'll make that related to you. But let's talk to this particular lady. She's sitting in a restaurant, and she's just talking about what it's really like to be in Turkey under Erdogan. And these, all these folks are saying we just need to be friendly with the whole concept of political Islam. Watch. Take a look. Turkey is so much politicized since the last time you came. Like, after 2011, um, the daily life issues, like um, how many children you should have, 
advising women not to laugh out loud in public. Things like this uh, were actually uh, suggested by the government. Right. So like now, do you think this is coming from a genuine ideological religious <laughs> place or is this a political calculation? I think it's um, a genuine... You're telling me that, that the current leadership is, in, the, in, in his heart, is genuinely opposed to alcohol? Women laughing in public? Um, it, maybe I don't feel comfortable answering that question. Okay. Is that not something? I don't feel comfortable wow. answering the question, is laughing right or is it wrong? Wow. I'm telling you, this, is this where we want to go as America? If we don't turn back to God, this is mm. where things are going. We'll be talking more about this prophetic warning coming up in our future program. But she can't even, she's not even comfortable at a restaurant talking about how many children she could have, whether uh, she can laugh or not. And, uh, and they tried in 2013 to have a coup uh, to be able to stop this push towards Islam. And we're early on in this equation. We're like way early on in America. But yet, hey, if the leaders are for it, yeah. no telling what can happen. And if we're not for God and turning our hearts back to God, God will let it happen. But let's look at what happened in the coup. What happened was they began to repress free, freedom of speech. They began to repress uh, all the freedoms that people would have. And they had a park where people can go and just kind of express themselves in this park. And they started shutting that down. As a matter of fact, look what happened when they said, listen, we can't have, we don't want this. So they started to have a coup, which means taking over the government. And so we got to get back to our constitution. Whoa. That's like amazing. It's amazing. Mm. Let's take a look. Turkey's most famous politician, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. He is the power, and has been the power in one form or another for more than a decade. He is the face of Turkey's ruling Justice and Development Party, the AKP. Erdogan has in recent years made Islamist politics mainstream, and while remaining very, very popular in this extremely polarized nation, cracked down hard on media, political opposition, free speech, and of course, demonstrations. In 2013, the almost revolution in Turkey happened. A protest to contest the proposed demolition of Istanbul's Gezi Park resulted in a brutal crackdown by the police. In response, ordinary Turks, unconnected by any particular ideology, poured into the streets. With the whole world watching on social media, they too were met with force. In the end, Erdogan remained firmly in control. And there were repercussions for many who had supported the protest. From that point on, media, social media, even open discussion of issues or events became treated as hostile acts by foreign enemies. From that point in 2013, they began to control the media. We're gonna, when we get back, we're going to actually see them, how, how they're saying in Turkey, that what they do is they uh, arrest any political opposition and shut them down. As a matter of fact, well, first we have this offer for you, and we're going to have this break and come right back. We're going to continue on and understanding this prophetic word spoken over Turkey. What does that mean in the context of the world? Forget about uh, the ISIS and the Islamic State, mm -hmm. Ottoman Empire, Empire, Turkey would be. You see why they've wow. been feeding reportedly into the ISIS is because they're like the front uh, warriors kind of yeah, for what's uh, wanting to rise up in Turkey. So let's listen to what uh, some of the citizens of Istanbul, Turkey, say about the political opposition. This is 2015. Mm. This is when he's been trying to push to get his to do away with the constitutional rights. Yeah. That's what's wanting to happen right now. Right now, there's people and their plans are, but I believe their plans are that way. And God's going, listen, a storm is being fashioned against you. I will give this plan. I'll give you over to this plan if you don't listen to me. It's the same thing the Muslim Brotherhood tried to do in Egypt with the Morsi. They were trying to suspend their constitution right. and usher in Sharia. Who got arrested and they replaced them. Oh, yeah. And so... me. Yes, and careful, so careful. yeah, so listen. Let's go there to Turkey and let's hear what someone said specifically, a citizen of, of Istanbul, Turkey, about political opposition and how the government responds. Let's take a look. 
So what happens if someone doesn't like your no, job? Somebody in a powerful position does not Do you like your job. What, what happens? Uh, depending on the degree, how much if he doesn't like you, how right. much he's offended. Let's say he's really offended. You go to jail. <laughs> or being, uh, you know, terrorist or... Aiding and abetting the enemies of the state. Yes, enemy of the state. Being an enemy of the state is the most common thing you can do right now in Turkey. If you didn't know they're watching wrestling, it's wrestling yeah, there. It was, it's, it's like, <laughs> we're not even going to go there. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> and so, um, but they're saying you get arrested, so you could not. This is a comedian. Mm. I mean, can you imagine how restrained a comedian is in Turkey? So, so the you can't laugh if you're a woman, reportedly. Mm -hmm. You can't drink, supposedly. Right. And it's so religious. I mean, religion is this. When you say on the outside, this is how it is, but you live a different life on the inside. America's got a big case of religion where, you know, and the world's looking at the church going, yeah, you say that, you say you love God, but you're sitting here and walk in the same theater I walk in mm -hmm. and see the same movies that I see and watch them curse your very God. So you don't really, you aren't that loyal That's to that right. God. And so you have people in um, Turkey that are promoting Islam that says specifically the Sharia law says you cannot have alcohol, you cannot drink, you cannot do all these different things. But by the way, this interview is taking place in Istanbul from a business owner who had 78 employees before Erdogan got in. Now he has 160 some odd employees. It's at a bar and he's having a drink, which is a big deal in Islam. You can't laugh. Right. As she said, as a woman, your baby count is told by the government how many you can have. Uh, but here he is having having a drink, and he listen to what he's saying. He's saying, I like Islam. I like the fact that it embraces. And so the interviewer is talking to him like, What is the disconnect here? How does, what, what do you do? This, you know? How do you reconcile this? And so but understand, this is the mindset. This is the mindset. And, 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 and in the end, whatever reason that you give for why you're embracing Islam, you're embracing Islam in the end. Mm -hmm. Take a look. The AKP is in power because a majority of voters put them there. Their attitudes, for better or worse, reflect the attitudes of a great number of Turks. All right, now. This is Nuri, a Turkish businessman. I'm glad we met you because you are an AKP supporter. You vote for AKP. Yeah, I did. Right. Um, why? Before, the economy was so bad. No foreign investment. Interest rates were so high. Inflation was about 100% per year. Per year. Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to make business in such circumstances. In 2002, I had 70 employees. Now it's 250. Since I got here, I've been talking to a lot of people who are very upset about the environment. They're upset about the destruction of old, beautiful buildings. To a great extent, they, they do not like what much of the world would call progress. So when you saw people running out in the streets and demonstrating, yeah. what was your feeling? They said they went there for the trees. They went there for the environment. But at the end, they were together with the terrorist people. Mm -hmm. We have to accept Istanbul like this. We got nothing to do. I cannot change it. No one can change it. No going back. 50 years ago, they could do some things, but not now. You're not sentimental about the old neighborhoods, the old... Uh, no. no. I got used to it. This is a party town. This is a nightclub town. The impression is that there is some ambivalence there. Ten years from now, will we be able to come to this bar or a bar like it and, uh, and, and, and drink lots of gin drinks and misbehave? No problem. No problem, I think. This is still a party town. Right. We drink hard. So it's all about money. It's all about money. Everything is all about money in the world. It's all about money. And the things the Lord's been showing us, I mean... It's sickening what people do for money. And people that Sick. say they're not doing it for money, if you actually talk to them long enough, 
They're doing it to keep their job. They're doing it for a raise. They're doing they're supporting a candidate because the candidate promised them a job or is going to give them a raise. It boils down to money. The money. And um, listen, the enemy is going to get many people to sell out to this beast economy kicking in, which is not a animal. It's a it's a system that's kicking in. And you're watching. He has all these reasons why he's embracing something that says he can't do what he's doing. Mm. And he says, are you still going to be able to do this? Yeah, I pretty much think I'll still be able to do this. So as in other words, the money keeps coming. So they're using radical you know, Islam with the Sharia laws to be able to control the people so they can make more money and do more business. And he's talking about the future of business is going east. And we're, we don't have time to talk about you know, BRIC and China and, and, and uh, Brazil and other countries that are working on a whole different trade now other than the internet IMF mm. and the, the dollar anymore. But uh, things are shifting that way. What he's saying is, is that we're embracing this because it makes political sense to us. It makes it makes money for us. It's prosperous to us. It makes money. But you, when you embrace a political Islam, you're embracing embracing a governmental system that that and a religion that says, you know, anti Jesus Christ as the Son of God. It's Jesus is not the Son of God in their mm-hmm. minds and their hearts. It is a it is a antithesis of the gospel. And what they believe is. You know, if you read and you can see it on the VFN torch, but the Quran says very specifically that a beast will come out of the ground and the beast, this is the Quran, we have it for you on the VFN torch, and put a mark on you. And they say this is a good thing because that'll separate you from the ones who don't have the mark. And so we got to, you know, pay close attention. And you're looking at now, it's obviously not like a Tasmanian devil coming out of a hole in the ground. It's a political system, a political religious system where people say, hey, Whatever we have to embrace to make more money, be wow. more prosperous, even though it's anti-Jesus Christ as the Son of God, a religion. As a matter of fact, when we get back from this break, we're going to go one more time to Turkey and look specifically at how people just come up with their own ideas why we're doing what we're doing instead of just saying, we can't embrace political Islam in our nation. And we'll be talking about how another prophetic word over this whole thing in the Middle East is, it looks like radical Islam, but behind that is something way worse and more harsh than that is going to take over once everybody bites into this. So we're understanding that people have many different reasons, and it's the same thing you hear today. You talk to everybody, and it's just we have a tendency just to project our understanding on other people instead of to listen to them. And if you listen to them, yeah, I think T.D. Jake said, if you, you know, if you quit telling people what they are, and listen, they'll show you who they yeah. are. And we need to know, we don't need, just because you tell somebody there's something doesn't mean that they are. And what you're looking at, they have all these different reasons why they're okay with this regime. Erdogan embraced, this man is trying to take over and destroy their freedom, the Constitution. And that's what this night along nice was about, destroying all their political opposition and the military, because the military has always reportedly taken Turkey back. They're calling it a purge. The, the military has always taken Turkey back from dictators that try to come in and take it over. They, 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 they keep the, the – they protect the Constitution. Well, guess what probably just got removed was the part of the military that would protect the Constitution. But let's go back and, and listen to this particular couple as they're talking specifically about why they think – it's happening and the government's embracing Islam. Let's take a look. But well, when I was here last, it was a very different mood. Now at least the tenor of the things said by the government are increasingly ugly mm. uh, and intolerant. And you've got this social activism that's very unusual. Certainly the government is sort of appealing to traditional Islamic values. Mm-hmm. Whether it's for show or not, there seems to be some re-evaluation of how much of a party town do we want to be. These days, the powers that be don't like it. And uh, Do they genuinely not like it, or are they appealing to a political base? No, 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 it's populism. It's a political base. And lots of people, of course, play along, saying that they don't want to drink, etc., because that's the way you get your contracts, that's the way you get things done. But, I mean, nationalism seems to be working internally. Yes. Uh, nationalism and xenophobia, it's a vote-getter almost anywhere. Well, it's a vote-getter, but it's a vote-loser as well, in the sense that there's so much backlash. When you think about it, 
you know, you're looking at all these reasonings versus saying just no to Islam. Right. No. Ataturk said no in the beginning of Turkey. Let's keep it no. And the end result is listen, if if you if you say, listen, I'll let you beat me this much, what's to say that they're not going to beat you all they want to beat you. Right. If you say, oh, I'll let you control me with this religious system this much, do you think they're going to stop at that form of that limit of mm-hmm. control? You're surrendering your freedom over. And when you think about this whole thing is shifting, everything's shifting east. We're just, you're going to notice this conversation that, that's being had right here. America's not in this conversation, which has to do with economy and money and future in the next 50 years. And we're seeing it take place, but we're just operating in the sense like, oh, it'll always be this way. It can shift overnight. As a matter of fact, let's talk. He's asking the question now, well, what does the future hold for the businessman? Where, where do you see Turkey doing business? Take a look. Who will be Turkey's bestest pal internationally? Which way are they looking? To the east or the west? East, Russia. China, Iran, and the Arabic countries. Because the uh, West, uh, Europe, is getting weaker and weaker day by day. In the next 50 years, it's going to be the era of the East, not the West. Mm-hmm. So these notions of like freedom of the press, these are not Eastern concepts? No. <laughs> no, I mean, no, they're not. No. Okay, I'm going to ask a tough question. Is freedom of the press overrated? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's overrated. You think a, a tightening up on the press is a sacrifice that you're willing to make for a good economy? I don't want to put words in your mouth. But prosperity for the majority. Yeah, it is. It's the same all over the world. It's not typical for Turkey. Right. That's life. So many people give all their rights away for the promise of prosperity, and always right behind it comes a Saddam Hussein, a Hitler, a Nero, you know, some sort of dictator coming in right behind that. But he's willing to embrace that because he makes more money. Mm. But let's listen to what John Paul Jackson, even give up the freedom of the press. You think about that. But see, the thing is, he's violating the very thing he says he's for. He's using religion to get his way. But listen, you can't use religion. You'll be taken over by the very one who actually is over that system. It's like making a deal with the devil, isn't making it? Making a deal with the devil. As a matter of fact, listen to what John Paul Jackson says specifically, prophetically, about this very thing, about there is this radical Islam coming in the Middle East. And he said this like in 2008, so you're seeing it now happen in your presence. And he said, those that don't embrace it, he said, they will actually, something harsher is going to be behind the scenes and totally take all that. This guy, that's, all this freedom of day, you'll see him on the news, if there is news, hmm. you know, yeah, running on the freedom streets. freedom of press anymore. Yeah, that's right. It won't be freedom of press. Matter of fact, take a look now. So the Lord began to tell me in, in, about things in, in 2007, began to show me things that were going to be happening, and the things like Egypt. He said, watch what's going to be happening in the Middle East, and here's a sign for you, Egypt. President Mubarak is going to be removed from office and Egypt will turn into a terrorist state. When that begins to happen, know that the rest of the Arab nations that do not uh, espouse uh, religious uh, extremism, uh, Islamic religious extremism, understand that they will be deposed under a false guise and a harsher regime will take each of their places, including Saudi Arabia. And it will begin, watch Egypt. So you're looking at a harsher regime. They're using this this system called radical Islam. This man in the $600 million palace, Erdogan, Erdogan. is trying to do it with the Constitution because they think they can do it better. But listen, Hillary Clinton wrote a term paper and a thesis Mm. about with uh, Saul Alinsky and and, and his whole technology. Techniques of doing that. This Rules is for it's everywhere you look right now. You look at what happened to Venezuela, what's taking place where people are charging over the borders. We'll talk about that in our next program coming up. But realize, hey, you know, we got some evil things happening in the earth. Are we going to give up our freedom? Our freedom comes from God. We as the church have to not just yell at folks and tell people what to do. We ourselves need to say, you know what, I'm not going to follow radical Islam. I'm not going to follow other gods. I'm going to follow God whose son is Jesus Christ. I'm going to make him the Lord of my life. I'm going to turn back to him, the God of this nation, and say, Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us for our sins, and we're going to be your disciple. We're going to follow you. 
That's all it takes. Mm. And all of a sudden, all this storm stops. But this storm is like, it, it is, it is like four, potentially at this point, four months from overtaking America. We have to wake up. We can. God's telling us now so we can wake up. I want to pray right now for you. I want to pray that you respond, and, and we won't be like this. these people in Turkey to say whatever, whatever, and give all these different reasons versus the fact it's wrong. We can't embrace that. we got to get back to the Constitution, the original tent of the church, and the original tent of America and the Constitution. Father God, we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for your wisdom and for your grace and for the, the grace that you shed on America, Lord God. I ask you right now, Father God, that you would wake us up, that we would become alert, Lord God, and we wouldn't make all these different wrong excuses for what's really going on where somebody is trying to take away our right for freedom of press, to worship you freely, to be able to uh, have constitutional rights for each of the citizens. And, and those people, Lord, that are trying to use oppressive systems to control people so they can make more money and prosper, God, I pray that you would rid this nation of them, that you would rid this nation. We would come back to the to the blue collar that we would work for a living, Father God, and we would uh, uh, do what's required of us, what you called us to do, so you can bless the work of our hands, God, that you would make America, again, a prosperous nation under you, God. We ask, dear Lord, end abortion. God, send revival. Send a third great awakening, we pray. In Jesus' name, God bless. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.